paras korkeakoulu opiskelijalle. Hello and welcome to this new episode of Visit Sam Week. As you have seen before in previous episodes, we always have a new guest, a special guest, and also usually we are in a new place. And today we have a special guest, Mr. Jarko Pakkanen. Hello, Jarko. How are you? Hello. Nice to be here. Thank you. Well, about nice to be here, tell us where we are today. Uh, actually, we are now in the laboratory of mechanical engineering. And uh, our students, like from the mechanical engineering and also automation students, are, are doing laboratory exercises in this space. Yeah, the first thing when we come into this place, I thought, it is very noisy here, but... Um, but I think it's good that it's noisy, because it means that students are working here. Yeah, yeah. something is happening. Yeah. Well, I'm just a little worried that something will fall into my head. No, I hope it worry. doesn't. Don't worry, no? don't worry. <laughs> we are, we, we, we we are we're good. We we're definitely safe. Definitely, we are safe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Jarko, so you are one of the uh, lecturers in the Automation Engineering program. Yeah. Can Sorry. you tell us what is the program all about? So nowadays the Automation Engineering is uh, way different than it was like, let's say, decades ago or, or one decade ago at least. Because now, uh, as you know, the things like artificial intelligence and, and, uh, and the programming and, and these kind of things have taken so much uh, effect to, to our engineering and it's not, it's not only about making machines and things, it's more like coding and, and these kind of things. And uh, what is affecting uh, most nowadays is this uh, Industry 4.0 and also nowadays even a 5.0. And we are talking about the digital twins and, and uh, big data mm -hmm. and uh, these kind of things. Yeah, this sounds very interesting. And uh, for example, what are the students expecting to be learning if they will join this program? What do they usually do here? So what comes to automation engineering, they of course start from the basics, mm -hmm. things, what are like digital technologies and, and just the uh, basics of the programming and these kind of things. And uh, then when they get familiar with these, they can start to make the programs for the, against the machines, for example. Making the programs to make the robots move and making the PLC programming. And, and it's, it's more or less like a create the intelligence of the, the machines. So they can actually uh, do the programming and then put it to taste. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. Trial. yeah. That's exactly most what we do in the laboratory exercises. What is this thing behind us? It's a welding robot, actually. Like a robot it's robot? A, yeah, like a robot robot. It's an industrial robot. And, and this six uh, axis uh, industrial robot is actually the most common robot type in industry. And, and, and here what we do is, um, that's something would have been changed a lot during the, the years. And we don't do any programs here with a robot teeth pendant like okay. it's normally done. We do all the program in a classroom we have the simulation model of this cell. We have the uh, model, 3D model of the product. And then we just create the programs for the robot in the classroom or somewhere else. Maybe even at the home or during the holiday when you're traveling. You can make the program for the robot there. And then we just send the program here to robot and it started producing. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. For example, uh, I'm sure some of our viewers will be interested to know, uh, like, how long is the automation engineering program? Usually, you know, what, what's the length of? It's the it's the four years. Four year program. Yeah, four yeah. years, and it's including the training period in the some company. Okay. Which takes uh, it starts in the end of the third year, and uh, it continues as, after the summer. Uh, first period in the last year. So all together, I think, seven months. Okay. Do you think it's difficult for students uh, to find practical training place, you know, like to, to practice with companies? It might be, yes. And, and, but of course, we are trying to do our best to help the mm -hmm. students to get the, the trainer place. Okay. And, and we have a lot of, uh, like, a, 
how you said it, like a companies uh, which who which we do a lot of collaborating, okay. and, and like a partnership companies, and and then 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 we can help the students to get there. Yeah, because I'm wondering, for example, there is we have students who studying different degree programs mm. and uh, some of them are really highly required to actually learn Finnish as yeah, much as yeah, they can yeah. in order to, to do their practice. Do the automation engineering students need to learn a lot of Finnish to program no. and... No, no. Like I would say because there's a lot of uh, n like a s uh, small and medium sized companies mm -hmm. here in our area also who are still working globally. So the, the working language is still English. And of course, there's a big companies, which say like uh, Prima Power, Pesmel, these kind of companies in, in our segment. Mm -hmm. and, and definitely the, the language is English. Because everything, the program is in English, the, the, the coding is made in English, everything. The customers are up road. So the working language is English. So, so where do you need Finnish, actually? Yeah. I will think that um, uh, this degree program has that advantage. <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> think it's, in, it, yeah, it's I our think it's side. It's a great advantage, yeah. 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 Um, what about some of the study models or some of the classes that the students uh, have to go to? Do they do, for example, a lot of math? Or is there a lot of writing essays? Or, you know? It's like, a, I would say it's, it's like a half and half. Okay. And so we do a lot in, in exercises in laboratories as well. So, but of course, before you go to the laboratory, you need to know the theory behind of the course. things. So that's why, as we are University of Applied Sciences, it means that uh, we do a lot like in practice. Mm -hmm. We put hands on things. And, and so, I like to do like that we uh, how I like to teach is that we go through some part of the theory and then we come to laboratory to test it mm -hmm. uh, or of course we can do a lot of things uh, we don't always need to come here to laboratory we can we have these simulation models for example mm -hmm. from from this robot cell we have the simulation model and we can do the testing with the simulation model on the computer and it's more safe uh, especially when we are doing the first practices, mm -hmm. all, let's say, 30 students can do the same practice uh, to, to make the program for the robot safely and all at the same time. Because, uh, of course, we have several of robots here as well in this mm -hmm. laboratory, also in another laboratory, but, but all these, uh, like one class, they don't fit all together to the same robot. And, yeah. it's, it, and, and I would say that it's, it's a lot more safe to do it in, with the simulation model. Yeah. And there you can, you can make the uh, like, uh, mistakes there. And you can, the, the best way to learn is, uh, learn is, of course, the mistakes. Yeah, so students shouldn't be afraid to make mistakes. No. And uh, it is very nice to hear uh, everything that the students can experience in, this, uh, in these labs. But Tell us, are we really that modern as we think we are? I think so, because what I have been seeing uh, in in companies, what they are, uh, what kind of equipments they are using, uh, what different universities are using. So I would say that we are very uh, like state of art in 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 our our laboratories, and of course we need to be. It's Im important that we are a little bit ahead mm -hmm. the things what companies are using at the moment. So that's why we need to implement the new technolo technologies all the time to our laboratory to stay there. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I think that uh, for students it's very important, you know, not only to to hear, mm. but actually to be able to see us sitting in one of the labs with yeah. a robot behind us. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Jarko, can you please share with us uh, what kind of places uh, can students actually work after graduation, or what in, in what kind of careers can they envision themselves? 
Yeah, I think it it's depends a lot about the individuals as mm -hmm. well. How are you? Are you ongoing person or, or do you like to just make the, the development uh, in a small group or are you like an outgoing person that you want to take a part to the sales, mm -hmm. for example, and meet a lot of new people? And, and so I, I think that the automation engineering studies give you a very good uh, like um, opportunities to to co-work in very different tasks. So, uh, for example, you can work as a, a data analyst mm -hmm. if you are interested more about the, the big data and these modern things. Or some persons might be more like uh, like uh, uh, interested about the engineering and developing the machines and so on. And, and, and they are interested about the, to the development with the CAD software, for example. So th those are the, the tasks where you are more uh, working on the small groups, developing group, groups, and, and a more with the computer and, and so on. But I also believe we also offer master's degrees if the students would like to continue their study with mm. us as well yeah. to, to to become then experts in certain areas. Yeah, master degrees, of course, it gives you a possibility to do work as a manager and and, and in work in the upper level in a supply chain, for mm -hmm. example. Okay. You already mentioned a few things about the program, you know, some of the study models, what can the students do after graduation, but what do you think, in, um, in your own opinion, what, what makes this, this program so special? For example, that students mm. would like to join. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, if I'm thinking about the uh, about the Finnish students mm -hmm. who are uh, studying in the automation engineering, I would say almost hundred percent of these students are employed after the the they graduate. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that there is room also for the the students from the approach as well. In your many years of experience and, uh, and teaching here at SAM, what do you think that foreign students can expect, you know, while they're studying here? Uh, I think the, the, the Finnish way to teach or study mm -hmm. difference uh, quite a lot. If I compare, for example, the Middle Europe way to teach and study, and uh, it's more uh, that there are teacher and the students, mm -hmm. and, and there's a, a cap between them. And I think in some there is no such a cap between uh, students and a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do the research together, but but as a, as a teacher, I'm I'm more or less like a coach for them. I, sh I, I only say that we should learn this, we should learn this. These things might be something what I don't know already. So mm -hmm. that's why we learn them together. We do the projects. We work here in the laboratory. We test the new things. And, and those are the things what I don't know before as well. And then we, then we work like more like a team. And, and the teacher is uh, part of that team. Maybe the leader, but the part of the team. And, yeah. and but you know, I, I have to, I have to admit that uh, that is true. Like I have witnessed myself personally, yeah. you know, when working with colleagues and uh, mm. and also I was a student myself here at Sam, yeah. and it was a beautiful experience considering the fact that uh, the teacher wasn't a person that I had to be afraid of or yeah, afraid yeah. to approach. That was ask. actually what I meant. It, it was yeah, actually yeah. easy, yeah, easy, easy to talk easy. to the professors, yeah. and uh, yeah, it was nice. And and I have. I have had like a experiences that students say that really can we really do it by our, ourselves? Can we touch that? Can we do the program and use the robot by ourselves? That it's not only that the professor came and shows you something. This is how it works, and that's it. And and they can they really can put their own hands on and do the things. And that's that's, that's great. All, many times it's very surprising for the students. I can imagine. Well, well, let's talk a lot about a little bit about Senayoki itself. You know, okay. Sam is located in Senayoki. Yeah. Now, 
Um, how is Senayoki as a town uh, for foreigners? Like, how, what can they expect while living in Senayoki? So, uh, I'm from the small village. Uh, <laughs> smaller than Senayoki. <laughs> a lot smaller. Uh, I guess there is only like 1,200 people at the moment. Uh, okay. When I left, there was like a 2,000, two decades ago or uh, even more. So uh, I think it's for, for the students for the uproad, it's a, a little bit same what it's for me. It's easy to handle this size city. Everything is close by, and, uh, but still uh, there is all the services what you need. There is a very good chance to make hobbies like uh, sport hobbies and, and uh, and the culture things, like there's a lot of geeks and there's a province Iraqi things like that's uh, um, a culture, but you can enjoy, there's a lot. And, and, and the, to the sports and everything is close by. Y you can reach everywhere by, uh, by uh, bicycle. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the, the school campus, which is actually very nice, I would say. We have the, the school, the school campus is located very nearby city center. Mm -hmm. And there is uh, the apartments for the students are very nearby. You can just walk here to school. That's and amazing, right? That mm. for example, in one side of campus, you know, we have a student housing. Mm. And then, uh, and then aclo across the river in the other side, we also have other student housing. And, uh, and, and then right after that is downtown. And, yeah. and somehow everything is, as we say here, um, bicycle distance town, you know, like yeah, every yeah. week you can reach everywhere by yeah. bicycle. As a foreigner, I, I've been surprised to see people um, using bicycles during winter, like winter, snow, icy road, and then people in the bicycle. Mm. That's, that shocks me. Somehow it tells me uh, how the culture in Finland is that that are not because of bad weather, not because it's too cold, like they mm. just don't stop. You know, like things keep moving, we keep doing things, we still have classes, we still have work, everything keeps going as normal. Mm. We just adapt. Yeah. And I think that yeah. is very, very important for, for our viewers to realize that, that um, when you come here, it will be cold and things just keep, keep working. So. I really want to thank you for, for all the answers, for the time, for showing us the lab a little bit. And, but I have one more question before we, before we go. And this question is, uh, why, would a, why would a person from abroad, from another country, would actually choose Sam to come and study with us? So, uh, so we can summarize a little bit then. So as I said before that, uh, why is it automation engineering students come to SEAM is that uh, uh, we have selected by a students a best uh, university mm -hmm. uh, several times and, and the laboratories what I told they are very modern that you can learn here the new things always and, and I would say that the personnel here uh, I mean uh, teachers are very easy going as you said it, it's they are very easy to to speak to them and and so on so we have very relaxed relaxed uh, atmosphere but still we are working hard Yarko, i want to thank you for this time for the interview for all the information that you gave us um, I hope that the viewers at home are able to see this interview and get inspired, you know, maybe to study whether automation engineering or any of our programs in English. And uh, thank you so much for taking this time as well. Hopefully I will see you here in St. Ioki.